The Logic Pro 10.8 update is the best free update Apple has given us Logic users in years. New synthesizer. Oh my God. New mastering plugin. Ta-da. New audio mangling effect plugin. That's pretty good. A chat GPT AI powered text prompt plugin that helps you make mid-tier music. Oh, no, my bad, maybe in 10.9. So let's be honest, outside of FL Studio, any other DAW developer would charge you for this level of updates. It is really great that Apple released this for free. So this video is gonna cover all the most interesting and new features and additions in Logic Pro 10.8. So let's just cut the intro short and dive right into it. This is Sample Alchemy, a sample manipulation-based synthesizer. So, as the name suggests, Sample Alchemy, it's clearly related to its bigger brother, or older sibling, I should say, Alchemy. But in my opinion, what Apple's done here is they've taken some of the best bits of Alchemy, they've distilled it into a new, easy, and fun to use synthesizer or plugin. So what you're hearing right now is called Angelic Guitar Pad, it's one of the included presets. We're gonna change to another one. Let's turn up the sustain on this. Let's go to another preset. So as you can hear, Sample Alchemy is an excellent tool and playground for pads, soundscapes, atmospheres. They can also do a lot more than that, and we're gonna explore it right now. So Sample Alchemy is a sample manipulation-based synthesizer, which means there's no virtual analog waveforms or wavetables. You need to feed this plugin a sample, and it will play back sounds in unique ways. So there's a few different ways you can load up a sample. You can, of course, go and choose any of the presets like we've been doing, and samples will be a part of, obviously, any preset. So load samples from Show and Finder, load an audio file. You can drag and drop Apple loops in. You can even take one-shots from your actual session. This is a one-shot from our free one-shot pack, Aura, and you can drag this into the center of Sample Alchemy, and you can start generating sound. So Sample Alchemy has three different synthesis engines that you can use to generate sounds. There's the granular engine, and anyone who's a fan of granular synthesis should be familiar with this. And you'll see that the controls under each mode will change contextually, depending on if we have granular, additive, or spectral loaded up. And there's a drop down on spectral and additive modes where you can choose different algorithms for how those are actually operating. Blur is one of my favorites. Now in each of these three different synthesis modes, you have access to different playback modes. So let's turn off B, C, and D. We'll double back to that in a second and go just to A. So right now, we have it set to granular, which means it took our one-shot sample, ran it through the gran granular resynthesis algorithm, and that's what you're seeing and hearing here. We have it set to classic, which means that it will trigger kind of like a sampler. It always starts from the start of our sample. You can change the start of your sample by clicking on the letter associated with the sample point. In this example, we'll use A and move it in. Now this is really helpful for more uh, elongated samples. This is a short one shot plucky sound. So here this doesn't have a huge effect on the sound. Now if we go to loop, this will give us a section that we can loop through. Of course we can change our start point. And then this dot on the end is the bound of our loop. We can turn on snap and have it loop based off transients or even beat. So now we have a rhythmic pulsing effect. We can take this end loop point and drag it backwards, and now our loop point will work in reverse. And 
And if any time a sound is too loud or too quiet, you can pop over to the mixer tab and turn it up. So this mode is called Scrub. Scrub is kind of like a freestyle effect within your playback and how you have things set up with like things like density, random time, and the size. I think this sounds best in the granular mode, but check it out if we solo this. And I find, and I found so far that this sounds really nice with samples that might have some melodic like chord elements to it, not just one shot samples. Let's check out the next mode, which is bow. So now to check out bow, we're gonna use this preset called classic strings. We can see that we have all four points or oscillators within the sample loaded up, and we'll just turn those off so we're just looking at A. You'll see that with bow, depending on where your start point is at, it starts at the start point, goes out a little bit past it based on how you have some things set down here, and then comes back towards it. All right, so before we go on to the other play, the last playback mode, the art playback mode, let's first talk about what these other points are. These other points are just kind of like your oscillators or your sources, but your source is always gonna be the same audio file. You could export audio files that have different sounds based on the grid. That'd be a little bit of a more advanced hack that I might show in other videos. But for this example, it's all one string sample. So when you load up the various sources here, it allows you to change where certain start points are for each source, and Sample Alchemy will play all of these based on how you have your settings for that engine. Now what gets really cool is that we have source A set to granular, source C is set to spectral. We can set source D to additive. So now we have a granular, spectral, and additive sound playing all at the same time, and we can control how much of that here with our mixer. So if we just want a little bit of the additive, which is set, which are source D, we can turn that down. Now it's important to be familiar with these before we go to our next example, which is the ARP. To achieve an ARP, you need to have more than one point active to get the actual ARP effect. All right, so I've created a little ARP here with this sample. And if we, load, if we click on each source, we'll see exactly what's going on. Right, we can see that we have a couple different engines loaded up. And I've synced the start position for each of the four points to a transient. You can see that we have snap set to transients. But here's the actual sample. And that is what's giving us this. We're gonna pop over to the motion tab. You can create cool motion arcs. Basically it's kind of like setting up automation, but in a more, I guess, less uh, tedious way where you don't have to actually open up any automation lanes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit record. I'm gonna move this around. So I've just created a motion arc by hitting record while it was playing so I could hear it obviously. And now when I play it back, watch the line. It'll actually start to move around in that arc pattern that I created. Which really does open up a near endless amount of possibilities when you're working with samples. We're gonna try out the new mastering assistant. This is aimed at helping you get polished mixes and masters so you can release on Spotify, of course, Apple Music, and any other medium you'd like.
So if we look at the master track now in Logic, there's going to be this mastering text that's black and when it's grayed out instead of white. And if we click that, it's going to load up the mastering assistant. So I already know this is way brighter. It was nothing but a moment. No just blue couch in your apartment. I was caught up in the notion. So yeah, a little tinty. So let's turn down this auto EQ curve a little bit. Stay over. The soft eyes always get me in trouble. Talking up to There is a loudness compensation, which is nice. Nice. If you're wondering what is this EQ curve, why does it look so weird? Well, it's a corrective EQ. It's trying to, it's basically kind of like probably like sound theory's Gullfoss EQ, where it's trying to make your sound sound as pleasing to the human ear as possible by evening out the tonal spectrum in a way that's pleasing to us. Now there's different characters, but if you don't have a silicon chip, you only have access to one like I currently have. Like we had the same point of view. Turn up the loudness of the dynamics a little bit. It was nothing but a moment. No dress blue couch in your apartment. There is a harmonic exciter, but this track does definitely not need that. Thinking it would be different with you. You're begging me to stay over. The soft eyes always get me in trouble. Talking up to the morning. Felt like we had the same point of view. And yeah, of course, we can control the stereo spread. So I'm not sure how much I'm sold on this. Let's try it on one other track or source material real quick. So obviously a way different <laughs> type of track. But let's see what it does with this. Yeah, so I think it fared a little bit better on this track than the other one. If you have a mastering workflow that you like to use or certain plugins, I don't know if this will replace this, but if you're in a pinch and you're trying to finish something quick, or if you're just starting out with music production, I actually do think this is an incredibly helpful tool. So this is Beat Breaker. Beat Breaker is an audio plugin that is going to reorder its incoming audio, which you can see in the background there. And it's going to allow you to slice things up, rearrange it, pitch it, shift it and just mangle it. Now, it sounds like it's kind of more of a creative tool and it definitely is, but it replaces a lot of third-party plugins, especially if you don't have them. So check this out. This is basically like a gross beat in FL Studio. FL Studio gross beat is really popular with trap and hip hop producers. And so there's actual third-party applications that do it. Maybe something like Sugar Bites Effectrix as an example. We can load up any of these different, uh, basically pre-made patterns for us. Let's do a stutter. Now, when you load up one of the presets, there's going to be different shapes that you can access within that preset down below. And you can turn the pattern off over here to the left. You can change the length. You can de-click, which we'll come back to in a second because that needs to work way better. And of course, there's a mix control. There's time, repeat, and volume. So it's very similar to Gross Beat or even um, Melda Production has a plugin like this as well. I'm blanking on the name. So let's go and change. Let's go to Time Shift and we'll go to Shifted Flow. So that's kind of like a buffer effect, right? Now, that's all well and cool, those really creative effects, but I think one of the best features in this plugin is actually going to be the sidechain because a lot of producers, they use, I want basic repeater, I want basic and I want sidechain. They use LFO tool or kickstart. Well, now you have that built into logic with tons of different sidechain shapes. The only drawback is, is it's a little clicky and you can hear it on bases and the D click does not work as much as it should. Test it out for yourself, but it does add a little click to the high end of bass instruments I found. And maybe Logic will update that in the future. There's also a halftime effect. And we're all probably pretty, if you make trap or hip hop, you're probably familiar with the halftime, uh, the actual halftime plugin. So we'll go and we'll recall default. And this is what you would look at when you loaded it up 
by default. And you'll see here that there's some patterns right away. And here's halftime. Now this is working on a MIDI track right now, which is pretty cool. Turn our mix to a hunt to 50%. You get the idea. There's also a reverse end, which is a classic gross beat effect. Now we're gonna take a look at two new audio tools inside of Logic Pro 10.8. We have the slip tool and the rotate tool. Now, both of these do similar things. Now, if you've only ever been a Logic user, you may not know that slipping audio is a pretty standard concept to pretty much every other DAW in existence. So good job there, Apple. It only took you 10.8 versions to do this. Uh, slipping audio is a mainstay in Ableton, FL Studio, Cubase, Pro Tools, etc. Basically, the idea of slipping audio is it's a more intuitive way to work with chopping up and mangling audio that doesn't actually entail chopping it up. And I'm gonna show you it in practice. And the easiest way to show you is with a chopped up kind of stuttery vocal chop. So let's listen to this real quick. All right, so I have the chords muted for now just so we can hear this. But, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the slip tool to find different basic patterns or variations of this chop. So this was one loop that I then chopped up on a rhythmic grid, right? So we have a chop every quarter note, essentially. And what I'm gonna do is make sure that I have the slip tool selected on my secondary tool. So I'm gonna hold down Command. And as I hold down Command, you'll see that my mouse changes to the slip tool. So now I can drag either to the left or to the right, and it literally slips through the entirety of my audio file, even though I have a chop. Right, so now I can do that same thing here. So I'm gonna make another chop with my scissor tool. I want some audio here. So instead of taking this and rearranging everything or copying and pasting, I can just chop and then use the slip tool to find audio that might fit. Right, so I want something here as well, maybe even there, so let's try that. Now, the cool thing is because these are all individual chops, I can still I still have control over my region controls. Like I can still pitch them up and down and I can control like the stretch as well. So let's actually cut this right here now that I found that using our slip tool. We'll delete that, click this, hold down option, and I'm going to stretch this out. And maybe this one, I don't want to move that. I want to cut here and we will delete there. And maybe I want to actually slow this down with a, instead of fade out, we'll do a slow down effect. And maybe we need to extend this as well. Some option click. Now the rotate tool will be similar, except that it will allow you to basically not run out of source audio or MIDI. And I'm gonna show you the rotate tool on a MIDI track. So we can actually use the rotate and slip tool on MIDI. It doesn't have to just, it's not just limited to, uh, to audio. So if I hold down command and we start to move through here, you can see that basically I'm running out of notes as I move to the left, right? My bass just went away. And that's because this MIDI loop is only these four bars. So when I start to move through, I just lose that first note, right? Now, if we set this though to rotate, it'll rotate back around. So now let's say I wanted to have my first note be the second note and still have four notes in the sequence. With the rotate tool, I can do that. See, now we just changed our baseline. And I think that is super cool because now you can take a bass line or a melody and you can start to rotate through it and see what happens if certain parts are here versus there, maybe at the end or the beginning like we just did. Now, of course, you can use the rotate tool with audio as well. I just thought it'd be easier to show you on MIDI.
So the next feature I want to show you that was in this update, I think is going to be really helpful. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to using this as a way when I'm stuck on ideas. So a lot of people who use Logic, they don't use the drummer regions that often. They use them to kind of kickstart ideas and then might move it to other MIDI or other plugins. Basically, with the drum kit and the drum kit and drum machine designer, we have these different uh, drummers, which are kind of like almost AI assisted ways of playing the drums. You're, you're not working in MIDI, but you're not working in audio. So here's an example. Let's say this is too much. I can go to simple. I don't have a lot of control over how many kicks there are, but it did get more simple. Great tool for beginners, for people who are just starting out. It's kind of like working with loops, but almost working with MIDI. Now we've had the ability to convert this to MIDI for quite some time. You go to right click, go to convert, convert to MIDI region, and then you can click and drag that out onto other other tracks like machine, battery, whatever, whatever you're working with, right? So I'll drag this out to tune track easy drummer right now. Right, but for now, for the first time ever, we have the ability to work with basically the drummer regions, right? If we right click, we can see that we can create a drummer region with third party plugins, which is going to be really cool, especially when you're looking for new fresh ideas. So this is Easy Drummer made by ToonTrack. It is a uh, drum plugin and it's obviously third party. I can now right click on this track and create drummer region. And I can then double click on that and I can access all the typical controls I'm used to working with with the drum regions. So the only thing you might run into that might be an issue with this workflow is the drum plugin you're using, maybe like let's say you're using battery. The kick might not be where Logic needs it to be. It needs to be on a certain mini channel for it to play back properly. Well, luckily there is a scripter preset you can load up called drum kit designer remapper that does this for you. So you just load up the scripter and then load up this preset and you're good to go and you're off. All right, so now we're gonna look at a couple odds and ends to finish up this video. And I think this next one's actually going to be quite huge moving forward. If you go to your settings and go to recording, you'll see that there is now a 32-bit float option. And if you click that, it's for the first time, it's gonna be like, hey, make sure your audio interface can handle 32-bit float. If you don't know about 32-bit recording and 32-bit floating point, um, you're going to be pretty stoked to find out about this. In theory, there's a lot of advantages of 32-bit recording, but it requires an audio interface that can handle basically that bit depth. And there's not a lot to do currently, but in my opinion, this will be kind of the wave of the future. The advantages of 32-bit recording basically means clipping is going to be a thing of the past. You can literally just turn down something that you clip. It brings digital recording almost into the analog world in the sense of clipping made things pleasant when you're working on an analog console, unless it was super, super, super loud, just added saturation and distortion. Whereas with 32, with 24-bit recording, there was a ceiling, a hard cutoff, where if the signal uh, exceeded that, it just clipped it and made everything a square wave, right? So now 32-bit recording, you can literally just lower the gain, and now you you might you might have gain staged poorly, like recording your your guitar or voice, and you clipped horribly. Just turn it down with 32-bit fl float, you'll be fine. Same thing goes for if you record too quietly. You can literally just turn up the volume of the gain, not the volume, I should say, the gain of the recording once it's recorded, without increasing your noise floor, which is going to be pretty cool. Now, in that same vein, if we go to the MIDI tab, you'll see that there is a MIDI 2.0 checkbox. MIDI 2.0 is coming. Uh, more and more, um, you know, MIDI keyboards and things that use MIDI are going to be diving into MIDI 2.0. It's the first time MIDI has been updated in like, God, since like the 80s basically. So more and more stuff is gonna utilize MIDI 2.0. It's nice that Logic has that right out of the gate. And last thing to talk about, I guess, I guess for the Apple Loops users out there, there's more Apple Loops. So have fun with those. All right, so that's gonna sum up the video. If you guys have any questions or comments, or if you guys wanna point out any cool workflow hacks, you might've thought of looking at some of the new tools like Sample Alchemy, you know, Beat Breaker, and the Mastering uh, Assistant. Let me know in the comments section below. I've only been working with Logic 10.8 for a few days, and I'm sure I'm gonna grow into it as we all are. So again, thank you so much for watching and stopping by. Hope you're having a good day. See you next time.